and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honour me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. I state the obvious when I say that the church in this country at this time is passing through a moment of crisis. Now crisis, the word itself means judgment. So we as the church in this country at this time are under judgment. Certainly we're being judged by the world in many ways as the Royal Commission made abundantly clear. But more importantly, we're also under the judgment of God. But the God who is our judge is also very close to us. And one sign of that is the plenary council, which is God's gift. It's a call to renewal and reform, but it's also a promise that the process, the journey, will yield its fruit. The fruit that God wants and that we need. It will be water in the wilderness, as Isaiah says, rivers in the desert. So we're not on our own. The plenary council isn't just our work, a human concoction. It's a new thing that God is doing, no less than it was a new thing that God did for the exiles returning from Babylon to whom the prophet Isaiah spoke in the words we heard. Now, it's easy enough to devise new strategies, new programs, new policies. And they're all important. They have their place, certainly. It's easy enough to come up with our own ideas about what the church should be doing. But our own ideas sometimes end up creating a church in our own image. Just another human institution that can't deliver what it promises. Doing our own thing is what's brought us to this moment of crisis. The new thing that God is doing is far bigger than any of our ideas. Any of the strategies and programs or policies that we may devise. But it's the only thing that will take us beyond the crisis. God is stirring among us to form us in his own image. In other words, the image of Jesus. The themes that emerge from the dialogue phase of the plenary council have confirmed this. God is asking us to become missionary and evangelizing, inclusive and participatory, prayerful and Eucharistic, humble, healing and merciful, joyful, hope-filled and a servant community. Now why is this? Because Jesus himself is missionary and evangelizing, inclusive and participatory, prayerful and Eucharistic, humble, healing and merciful, a joyful and hope-filled servant. So God is making us in his image, just as he did in the garden. And insofar as this happens, the words spoken in creation will again be heard. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. 
In speaking of what God is doing, I left out one of the six themes of the plenary council, you may have noted. Open to conversion and reform. This is because Jesus doesn't need conversion and reform. He's the sinless one, the fully accomplished human being as God created us to be. In him we see what we are called to be, created to be. But we, however, have to journey on to the goal that lies ahead, the full stature of the risen Lord. The God who is gentle, compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love goes with us on that journey, doing for us what we could never do for ourselves, bearing our burdens and even carrying us when it all gets a bit much. But God doesn't force himself on us. He awaits our free response. Once our yes meets God's yes, then the process of conversion and reform can begin. And we're on our way home to the garden. Conversion and reform means surrendering. They mean giving up the old self, the ego, the pride, the self-confidence, all our great ideas and placing ourselves at the feet of Jesus who alone can reform us, reshape us in God's image. And that's what the Plenary Council is all about. It's a journey that requires surrender, humility and a willingness to be transformed. Also a commitment to listening to the voice of the crucified Jesus just as St Francis did when he heard the voice from the cross of San Damiano. That's what we have to do and it's why we have that cross so deep in the story of Francis but deep in our story as well. So brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, I ask you, are you ready to surrender? Are you open to being transformed? Are you willing to let God reshape you? Are we as a church, as a diocese, willing to let God reshape us? Now, hearing the call to surrender, to be reshaped and transformed into the image of Jesus, I invite you all once again, as we did at the beginning, to stand and to restate the commitment we made at the beginning of the assembly, but to do so now in the light of all that we have been given and all that we have experienced through this day and a half. So together with one voice, the voice of the church, the voice of the bride of Christ, let's say together, In the presence of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I believe that the Spirit is moving among us now, that the plenary council is the Spirit's gift, that this assembly has been the Spirit's work and that the Spirit has spoke in these days, that we are called to speak what we have heard. Therefore, I commit myself to listen humbly to pray deeply, to discern carefully, to speak truthfully, to go forth joyfully. So help me God and all the saints who gather round us here. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Mary MacKillop, pray for us. Saint Francis, pray for us. Amen. I invite you now once again to be seated.
And again, we will join our voices at the journey's end with the Plenary Council song, which is a prophetic call to a new Pentecost, new fire, the fire which will make us a church that looks like Jesus, a church which can really claim to be his body. So let's sing and then Teresa and Patrick will return to speak one last word. This brings us to the end of the Brisbane Assembly. Um, I'd like to just start by saying thank you so much to each and every one of you for being involved in this process over this last day and a half. It has certainly not been a passive receiving conference. You guys have been very much involved every step of the way. So um, let's uh, give ourselves a round of applause for uh, all of the effort, the time. These can be tough conversations and so um, 
every time that you stepped out and every time that you chose to speak up when perhaps you weren't sure that you wanted to. It's, it's an important part of this process. Um, this is, so where to from here? Lana's given us some really great ideas around that, that local action. Um, this has been a big part of the a big step of the plenary council, but you can continue to be a part of that and um, make sure that you do through uh, the plenary council website. So um, stay in touch that way. But one of the biggest ways that you can also stay in touch is by praying, praying for the continuation of this process um, as it continues forward. Uh, pray for the church that we do become a more Christ-filled church through this experience of the plenary council. Um, in the ways that we've been called to through the themes uh, that the Plenary Council has set out. And pray for the bishops, uh, that they will be inspired by the Holy Spirit and imbued uh, with the divine courage to step forward, to have these conversations and to carry the church into the future. Thank you so much for coming. We are so grateful that you are a part of it and I look forward to seeing uh, the fruit of these conversations as we continue through on the Plenary Council. Thanks very much. Take care.